Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember to support our channel, please subscribe. The alleged affair of Anne Boleyn and Sir Thomas Wyatt. There is a great deal that we do not know today about Anne Boleyn. She's considered one of the most important women of the Tudor period and her marriage to Henry VIII saw a period of change in England. To force through a marriage to Anne, Henry even split from the Pope and Rome, turning his back on the Catholic Church and declaring himself the supreme head of the Church of England. But Anne's downfall was quick and sharp, and within a few years of marrying the most powerful man in England, she was facing his wrath inside the walls of the Tower of London. Anne had been sentenced to death for adultery, treason and incest, and for this she was to be executed. Following her bloody death, Henry VIII went to great lengths to organise her erasing from history, and he confiscated paintings of Anne, and even had chipped her initials and insignia away from the ceilings of his royal palaces. But one mystery which surrounds Anne Boleyn and her fidelity is her alleged relationship that she had with Sir Thomas Wyatt, a 16th century poet, politician and ambassador. But what is the story behind this? Thomas Wyatt was described as being a handsome and physically strong man, and around the year 1515 he entered the service of the King Henry VIII. He was studying at Cambridge at the time, and his father had been a long-time associate of Sir Thomas Boleyn, and he was the constable and keeper of Norwich Castle. The pair were good friends, and through this it's believed that Thomas Wyatt first met and became acquainted with Anne Boleyn. Anne had been secretly betrothed to Henry Percy in 1523, and then this was broken off when Cardinal Thomas Wolsey refused to support the match. But Anne Boleyn, who had come to England from France in 1522, was catching eyes at the royal court. Henry VIII, it's believed, began his pursuit of her around February or March of 1526, and he was captivated by the witty Anne Boleyn, and he tried greatly to get her into the royal bedchamber. But Anne Boleyn refused to do anything with the king, until the problem of his first marriage was finished or over. It took a further seven years for Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn to marry, but it's during this time when it's believed that Thomas Wyatt fell in love with the young Anne Boleyn, it's believed that he became enamoured with her, and then in the early mid to 1520s, before Henry's eyes was caught. It's known for certain that the pair were friends and had been acquaintances, and as Thomas Wyatt was a handsome and strapping gentleman, then it's likely that Anne could have found him attractive. It's not known for definite that the pair were engaged in a romantic relationship, but we know that she was available for the king to capture her eye around the early 1526, and it's not entirely known if she had been seeing anyone, but Thomas Wyatt's name keeps cropping up as someone who possibly Anne may have had an affair with even at one point. One rumour that has persisted throughout the centuries is that Anne may have been Wyatt's mistress before the king fell in love with her, but there is little evidence that suggests that they had a physical relationship. The pair were both witty and intelligent individuals and were both flirty with each other. We know that the pair enjoyed each other's company and it's probable that Wyatt wanted more than just personal favours and companionship in a friendship with Anne. Anne, around 1526, had more prosperous proposals in husbands, in particular the King of England, but it's through poetry that we can interpret Thomas Wyatt's intentions and love for Anne Boleyn. One sonnet written by Wyatt Tyatt, who so lists to hunt, contains a possible reference to Anne Boleyn, an allusion to her relationship with the King. He writes, Who so lists to hunt, I know where is a hind, but as for me, he lass, I may no more. The vain travail hath wearied me so sore, I am them that farthest cometh behind. Yet may I by no means my wearied mind draw from the deer, but as she fleeth afore. Fainting I follow, I leave off therefore, sinist in a net, I seek to hold the wind. Who list her hunt, I put him out of doubt, as well as I may spend his time in vain and graveth with diamonds in letters plain, there written, her fair neck round about. Nolly me tanga, for Caesar's I am, and wild for to hold, though I seem tame. In particular the lines, gravens and diamonds with letters plain, there is written her fair neck round about, Nolly me tangas, do not touch me, Caesar's I am. 
In this, Wyatt could be saying that it's quite clear that he cannot be Anne's lover, as she is Caesar's, or Henry VIII's, the most powerful man in the country, whose idea and relationships cannot be challenged. He says Anne is a graven in diamonds or surrounded in wealth, but the overall message is that she is out of his hands now, and she is lost. It's believed that the comments of touch me not or noll in me tanga is a direct quote or comment from Anne. There is another poem also titled Ye Old Mule, and he writes, Ye old mule that think yourself so fair, leave off with craft your beauty to repair, for it is true without any fable, no man setteth more by riding in your saddle. Too much travail, so do your train a pair, ye old mule, with false saviour through the deceiveth the fair, whose if taste you shall well perceive your lair, savour of somewhat of a cupper's stable, ye old mule. Ye must now serve to market and to fair, all for the burdens for panny as a pair. For since grey hairs have been powdered in your stable, the thing ye seek for you must yourself enable, to purchase it by payment and by prayer, ye old mule. In this, Wyatt mentions the thing ye seek for and refers to sex. It's believed that this was written around Anne and Henry's marriage in 1533 and is a reference written just after when Wyatt may have made one final advance for Anne Boleyn. He may have been rebuffed by Anne, in another sonnet, he also described his first love for a brunette that set our country in a roar, and it's believed that he certainly is referring to Anne Boleyn, as she was the brunette who caused chaos across England with her marriage to the king. Also, there's another verse in Wyatt's work that alludes to Anne being his mistress, and he also writes on her life saying, And now I follow the coals that bequest from Dover to Calais against my mind referring to Anne being at the French court. But all this speculation and conjecture resulted in Thomas Wyatt actually becoming in a severe amount of trouble. In the May of 1536, he was imprisoned in the Tower of London and was accused of being one of the men who Anne Boleyn may have committed adultery with. He was imprisoned for a number of months and then was freed as his father was a close friend with Thomas Cromwell, and then he returned to work. But whilst inside the Tower of London, it's possible that on the 19th of May 1536, Sir Thomas Wyatt may have witnessed Anne's execution and beheading from the window of his cell, and also the executions of the five men whom she was found guilty of committing crimes with, who were executed on Tower Hill. He wrote a poem based on this, but he then became more favourable in the King's eyes yet again, but then was charged with treason in 1541. It was Catherine Howard who saved him this time, and he was then granted a full pardon and was restored to being an ambassador. The feeling inside the Tudor England must have been strong that Anne Boleyn and Sir Thomas Wyatt may have had an affair and intimate relations. We know for certain that the pair were acquaintances and would have spent a significant amount of time together, but Wyatt's writing and references to Anne led him being in a significant amount of trouble. But whether Anne and Wyatt did have an affair or did have a relationship today remains to be seen and there may be some evidence hidden away in a manuscript or a letter somewhere in existence that unveils a shocking truth. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.